Symphonic music today is so important and exciting because when you put 2,000 people in a hall with 85 musicians on stage, the kind of sonic impact and the ability to all experience art simultaneously in that exact moment is something that can't be replicated anywhere else. I joined the orchestra in 1997, so I am now in my 22nd year with the orchestra. I wish I could say it was something as noble as I attended a concert and heard a beautiful horn solo and decided that's the sound I want to make for the rest of my life. But I started on the clarinet because my parents wanted something that was kind of quiet and kind of small in their house. And, um, and then I had went to the dentist and sort of had buck teeth and needed to get a, uh, a retainer. And they said, you can't play any instruments that push your teeth out like the woodwind instruments where you bite down and you need to go get a brass instrument. So I was very excited and went to my band teacher and said, now I'd like a trumpet. And he said, those are all gone, but I do have this French horn and it was an interesting and intriguing shape and it had a lot of cool qualities to it um, that appealed to my um, engineering sentiment and uh, and the rest is history. There are a lot of different schools of playing. Um, German horn playing is different from US horn playing, is different from French horn playing and these approaches to this instrument they kind of um, create a body of sound and depth of sound that is very highly integrated in the the way the orchestra's timbre resonates. So sometimes the horn can be like a warm rich blanket over the top of the orchestra and other times it can be kind of like a red sharpie line running right through the middle creating a lot of energy and excitement. So um, it's a, a great feeling to be part of that visceral body of sound that, that the orchestra creates. As musicians, our paths take a lot of different twists and turns compared to um, you know, how a traditional career path might look. In my specific case, it was a very serendipitous event where a guest conductor happened to be um, conducting the New York Philharmonic and spoke to my teacher and the principal horn of the orchestra, Phil Myers, and said that he was looking for a new principal horn for his orchestra. They threw my name out. Um, I literally got called out of class to come over to Avery Fisher with my horn and play some orchestral excerpts. And within a week, I was on a plane to Honolulu Lulu for a new position as the principal horn there. I spent a year in that orchestra and it was a wonderful learning opportunity and then I was fortunate enough to win my position in the Colorado Symphony, another wonderful learning opportunity and spectacular place to live. A career in music gives you a chance to communicate with different people in different cultures um, and it's something that we all have in common. Um, I've had the good fortune to play on six different continents with lots of different artists. Um, everything from underserved youth groups in Colombia to um, playing concerti with um, renowned orchestras in Europe. And the one common thread is that when people sit down and put up their instruments, it brings people together and it's something that has, I'm, I'll be eternally grateful for the chance to connect to so many different types of people in different places. The Colorado Symphony means a lot of different things to me on many different levels. It's the place I met my wife, my children have been raised attending concerts of the Colorado Symphony, and many of my dearest friends are in the orchestra. So on a personal level, it means community and family. Um, from the perspective of the city of Denver, it's so important that we not only play at the highest level and and make amazing and exciting music for the community but also that we're integrated in that community and that we do things that connect the community to the art so that the art becomes a true and meaningful part of the fabric of our society right now we reflect and connect to the values of the community in our programming and in the way that we perform on stage.
One of the greatest things for me about playing in the Colorado Symphony is that I get to do it with my wife. Um, Julie Thornton is the piccolo player for the orchestra, and there are many times that I'm speaking only to her in my music making on stage, and, and it's just um, a really special opportunity. With two children and very active lives, we often don't get a chance to just sit down and talk, and <laughs> sometimes we do it through our music, and it's a really great thing to drive to work with her and be on stage with her, and um, I'm so proud to be married to such a wonderful musician. I've been on the faculty at CU Boulder for the past 20 years, and during that time I've had the opportunity to work with many of the most talented young people coming through the state who now hold positions in symphony orchestras around the world and at universities and are teaching in our public schools. Um, one thing I found through that process is that what we're really looking to do is help people find their very best voice as artists and as people to contribute something meaningful in this age of technology and um, high speed everything. When I'm working with my students and they're thinking about career orientation, we talk a ton about being clear about your goals and motivation before you choose your path toward those goals. In the 21st century, there are a lot of different creative outlets and opportunities for these kids, and we don't want to limit them uh, by using only traditional pathways. I'm so proud of those that are playing in orchestras and, and going through that kind of a path, but it's also wonderful to see so many people coming up with new and innovative approaches in chamber music and solo careers and things of that nature. Being a professional musician means that you put the art first in all facets of your life. Sometimes you don't sleep as much as you want to, sometimes you don't spend as much time with family or participating in activities you enjoy, but you make sure that when you go out on stage, you're giving the people that come to the concert everything that each of us has to make sure that it's a meaningful and memorable experience for them. It's a really exciting thing to come to the symphony because often you think of a recording you hear or maybe it was a, uh, a, a Sirius XM channel that had a bunch of classical music on it, but when you get there, there's a lot of visual excitement, there's the people around you and the energy that they bring to the room, and so it's not a one-person or one-way experience. It's something that's much broader and you become part of the music and part of the collective in the way that they experience it. The most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me would be showing up to work to a concert with no French horn, having left that at home. So fortunately, one of my colleagues lent me their instrument to go out and play the overture, and then I did not play the concerto, and I drove home to my house in Westminster, got my instrument, and came back in time for the symphony on the second half of the concert. Um, this is what happens when you have young children. <laughs> my personal challenge to everyone I meet is to look through the symphony's schedule for a season and find an entire year where we don't program something that really speaks to each person in our community. I'm so proud of our administration, our music director, our musicians who help with programming for being so genuine about connecting to our community and providing so many varied and exciting types of repertoire. So come see us. <laughs>